Hello and welcome to Left, Right and Center. I'm Ankita Mukherjee. Maoist mayhem once again in Chhattisgarh. 15 jawans and a civilian killed as a hundred Maoists first trigger a blast to stop a security convoy and then open fire. The ambush takes place very close to the site of the attack on Congress leaders in 2013. We asked tonight, will India ever have a cogent anti-Maoist policy? Also ahead on the show, it's defection season once again in the political arena. Ex-ministers, MPs, senior party leaders all switching sides like never before. We're going to ask whether political opportunism has now completely trumped ideology. But first, the big story tonight. 11 CRPF personnel, four policemen and a civilian have been killed in Jagdalpur in Chhattisgarh. Maoists outnumbering a team of Jawans at least two to one engaged in a three-hour encounter till security forces just ran out of ammunition. छत्तीसगढ़ में जहां पूरे अकेला छत्तीसगढ़ के लिए नहीं देश के लिए डेमोक्रेसी के लिए चुनौती है ये लड़ाई छत्तीसगढ़ अकेला ही नहीं लड़ रहा है इसमें सेंट्रल पैरामिलिट्री फोर्सेस के भी फोर्स हैं पूरे देश के लगे हैं इस प्रकार की चुनौती को सामना करने के लिए जवान तैयार हैं और आगे भी हमारी कोशिश होगी कि शांतिपूर्वक चुनाव जिस तरह से राज्य सरकार ने इस समस्या को गंभीरता से नहीं लिया है इसके बाद एक बड़ी घटनाएं होती जा रही हैं उसको देखकर और भी दुख होता है जब भी चुनाव होता है उसके पहले नक्सल नक्सली ऐसी घटना को अंजाम देने की कोशिश करते हैं विधानसभा का चुनाव हुआ उसके पहले उन्होंने विधानसभा के चुनाव को प्रभावित करने की कोशिश की और अब जब लोकसभा के चुनाव की घोषणा हो चुकी है तो उन्होंने दोबारा कोशिश की है नॉट पॉलिसी पर नेग्लिजेंस ये अभी तुरंत इसमें बात नहीं कर सकते हैं कि किसका फेल्यूर है Well, joining us on that discussion tonight, Ian Ram Mohan, former DG of the Border Security Force. We're also being joined by Varavara Rao, President of the Revolutionary Democratic Front. Ajay Bose, author and columnist here with us in the studio. Ajay Bose, let me begin with you. Countless attacks, the same platitudes, the same endless debates at the end of the day. Is there just no political will when it comes to eliminating uh, Maoist terror? Well, look at the political disarray in the country today. I mean, can you expect this political class to really come together on an issue like uh, the Maoists. I mean, you know, they tried uh, some years ago. And uh, there is firstly no political will, as it were, uh, across, you know, the political spectrum. Uh, that's first. Secondly, there is no strategy. I mean, we heard when Mr. Chidamran was Home Minister of a new strategy, of a new proactive policy. Uh, to crush the Naxalites. You know, we are very hot on rhetoric and, you know, the newspapers played it up and, you know, if you remember, the media went to town about it. But ultimately, what, did, what have we seen? I mean, if you look at the incident, this is, I mean, sheer suicide almost. I mean, you know, you're getting outmaneuvered in the jungles without any tactical sense, without, I mean, you know, it, it is just, you know, it is really shameful that we go on having these poor Jawans getting massacred, you know, in a war where nobody seems to be caring about where, where we're heading. For. I want to take this across to Ian Ramohan. You know, just the brutal one-sidedness of this all. A hundred Maoists first triggering off that security, uh, uh, the tr triggering off that blast, then hemming in uh, these Jawans, outnumbering them at least two to one, if not more than that, and then carrying on an encounter for three hours. The CRPF personnel, have they just become fodder really, lambs to the slaughter? Is that what it's come to now? It's very sad after all the experience they've had, after the uh, terrible ambush which they had, in which they lost 76 personnel. For some time there was a recoupment, but it looks as if afterwards they've again sat back. You see, there are two parts to this problem. One is the just professionalism of how to fight a counterinsurgency. I'm only talking of the fighting the insurgency on the ground. Now, you are in a forest area. The roads are mostly unpaved. I was told that some construction party was to move to an area. 
No, construction party is not uh, uh, fighting soldiers. So, there must be an element of troops along with them to give them protection. Now, when they are going to an area which is a forest, which is not known to you, one, there seems to have been an intelligence failure and this ambush was ready for them. Right. And there has been no information at all that there could be an ambush in this area. Achha, now, if someone is the commander of these troops over here and a construction party has to go, he has to send an element of troops along with him. When you are going into an area in the jungle, you should always sensitize the area. How do you sensitize the area? By sending troops on the sides. But do you see and this really the only there has as been failure in fieldcraft and tactics? I am only giving some details of it. Okay, you so see they have this been taken by surprise. An ambush always takes place when you are surprised. So you see this only as no, negligence no, no, no. on the part no, of no, no, no. the team. I don't see it only as that. Much more deeper is the question: Why is there an insurgency? You see, I have been trained in inter counterinsurgency, and I have operated in Naga Hills. I have operated in Manipur. I have operated in Assam. I was IG operations in Assam. I have operated in Kashmir. There isn't any other place left to operate in India. Right, right. I have not operated see, in this area. Do you see lack of political consensus on how to Most tackle insurgency? Yes. Yes. Most certainly, yes. The first question you ask when you find that there is an armed group fighting against the government is why have civilians taken to the gun? It is not the job of civilians to fight against the government. The government is a huge organization. Any amount of troops, any amount of weapons, something has gone wrong somewhere. Something has gone wrong somewhere. Do you see this as civilians taking up arms again. or is this now? No, no, I, I shall please let me complete yes. this. I have been yes. telling this again and again yes. in your studio and all the other studios. Right. Why is it that the Adivasis are the foot soldiers of the Maoists? Because they are not getting the rights as per the constitution of India. The fifth schedule says that the tribal areas, the scheduled areas will be administered by the governor by forming tribal advisory councils. That is a panchayat and the governor will report to the president of India which means the chief minister and his cabinet has no role. Why is it that in 50, from 1950 till today, no governor has touched the fifth schedule? You are not giving rights to those tribals because they are the lowest in the caste list. That is why. I completely agree. I mean, I think what he's saying is, is certainly, you know, I mean, that is the whole problem. All the long-term strategies are not in place. Mm -hmm. And even on the short-term, uh, you, know, uh, you, know, you know, at least coping uh, with the immediate problem, of the Maoist insurgency, even there we make an absolute hash of it. I, I so, so, so I think that you know, I think what he's pointing out that firstly, we do not have even the will to go into the essence of the problem. Yes. And of course, as he pointed out, that tactically you are making mistake after mistake. So, combine this with these two, this is a recipe for disaster. Let me bring in Sanjay Jha of the Congress joining us at this point. I think one of the big questions that we keep coming back to is the lack of political will. When you have ministers in your government uh, deferring even over nomenclature, whether they are terrorists or revolutionaries, insurgents or our own people, where is the political will? How is this going to make any difference on the ground? We will continue to have attacks like this in the same areas even time and time again. Your own party's leadership uh, has been at the uh, receiving end of the most brutal attack. In exactly uh, well, Ankita, area. you know, there is no denying, uh, there is absolutely no denying, you know, the fact that uh, if one has to look at a solution uh, to the problem of Maoism, it is not just about... Uh, you know, or some kind of a counterinsurgency or, or some kind of an attack to subdue uh, what have become clearly armed revolutionaries. Uh, I think the solution lies at the root of the problem will have to be in terms of ensuring, uh, you know, that there is a surrender of arms and at the same time there is an emancipation through investment in all the basics of livelihood that will make people who are marginalized and dispossessed uh, feel that they are being given adequate support by the government. You know, an example actually that comes to my mind is Andhra Pradesh. Over the last 10 years, under a, under a state that really prospered, you know, forget uh, the political temperature on Telangana, but overall Andhra is a very prosperous state. And because of the development, you find that although there have been sporadic incidents of violence, but overall naxalism, you know, in terms of its impact has been considerably lesser. So I think, you know, one of the challenges that we have, and I, this is something that all political parties will need to address because if you look at today's unfortunate tragedy, you know, look back that well, not long not, ago you had many of our Congress leaders. Let's not call it an unfortunate tragedy, it was cold blooded murder. 
Absolutely. Now I want to ask. I want to add a point here. Look at it like this: that you have had here uh, our own Congress leaders like Mr. Karma, Mr. Shukla was, you know, finally he succumbed to those wounds. You had you had deaths in the same area. Everybody knows about what happened in Dantewada with the bus bombing. Now the question that comes up, and this is critical, that uh, end of day we always find the opposition parties talking about federalism and law and order is a state issue. But you need intelligence. You need to understand how you are going to really. arm or you know eventually succeed against those who have got a mindset of violence but the truth is and i agree with the panelist who said something before that the bottom line is that you have to you know get people who are really being left out into the mainstream i think there are two it needs a twin strategy one of development one of emancipation one of integration and one of ensuring that those who are exploiting the the extremely innocuous sanjay ji i put it to you is it is it is it also actually take them on all right is it also time to really look at just some of the data we've got 3000 security personnel but also 12000 civilians killed in maoist violence in the last 30 years according to home ministry data are we really looking at uh, you know much more than just Uh, a social a development problem uh, is this really organized violence and and does that now need some kind of um, active intervention action oriented well, well, you know there is ab- yeah ankita let me tell you that you know there is violence there is bloodshed there are innocent uh, crpf jawans and so many innocent people who are civilians actually civilians as well and there are civilians actually, also uh, including the adivasi uh, uh, absolutely I, i was i was going to add to that there are innocents who are dying let's just say there are innocent people who are you know leading their lives and dying on account of a bloodshed when mausum has now become an extremely diabolical force now the question that comes up is that no government and i can tell you no government today can actually you know treat this as a pure uh, you know an insurgency issue there you know the, our own prime minister said that mausum is one of the biggest internal threats we face it is a reality uh, and but the other uh, solution to that lies uh, you know through uh, actually uh, both uh, development as well as ensuring that you are able to ensure that those who are armed and dangerous actually need to be disarmed and you know frankly jailed but you know whether you can have an, a surrender is something that frankly states and every every state government has to work on in tandem with the center but what you are also finding in india if you look at it ankita even in national you know counter terrorism center you know it actually never progressed because everybody talked about federalism our own independence etc but you need intelligence don't forget that the lot of innocent people are dying because the jawans don't know who is on which side so you know somebody just you know whispers uh, an information out about where you are moving and they become sitting ducks so this is really a very fragile uh, apparatus that we have and therefore these deaths have to be you know looked at as an extremely sad extremely tragic episode and i, I don't know, you know what we, the chatisgarh government is doing because they had they had a number of instances to, to try is and it, contain it they have done nothing is it downright disingenuous now to talk about maoists as champions of tri- 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 tribal and adivasis given how many civilian casualties there are in these Listen, regions let's understand this very clearly the poor adivasi is just the foot soldier he is not using his head he is just a foot soldier he has been denied his rights by the government all these years the rights which are enshrined in the constitution they are being trampled now he is just a foot soldier it is the maoist who has organized him the maoist has got an objective they have a exactly. political philosophy exactly. we don't want any maoist government in this country why have they done it they believe in that system and they have got these foot soldiers because you have given them in your uh, presented to them with, with bouquets because you don't give them their rights is this if you the give them their rights okay Ajay, where are the is, foot soldiers is this further is is this being complicated further by the whole center versus state divide whether it comes to even a broad agreement on a national counter terrorism center uh, you know already we've started hearing the blame game so to speak the home minister saying it's perhaps too early to point fingers um, the state throwing it back to the center where does all this go the endless wrangling no absolutely I, as i as i pointed out earlier there is a total political disarray the political class is divided for its own reasons but it's not just that i think this whole debate about maoism or what should you call them about revolutionaries or terrorists i think this is completely relevant really i think what you need is a proper plan and you need a long term plan a long term plan to eliminate the maoists from the terrain they operate in 
and you need a short term plan and does where that, you does where you militarily combat them because the maoists it is true have taken advantage of the alienation of the tribal from the administration Absolutely. but also they also rule by the gun the tribals are also very scared of the maoists so it's a both the things because they can't go against the maoists just like that so this is a very difficult fight it's it's you know it's accumulated this this distrust among the tribals has accumulated for a long time the administration has abdicated in large areas so they it doesn't even stand there so it's going to be a very tough fight but you need a systematic plan you can't keep on but flipping and flopping do you agree that yes. a systematic plan which includes an element of force must now uh, just have to be brought in where do you stand on all this and oh, and, see, and how do you respond to this latest uh, extremely cold blooded I'll attack all the time you know, i am hearing your questions and also some of the answers but you see when you say that this is cold blooded murder what is happening for at least uh, i will not go into the history but at least from 2009 when the government of india and also the state governments have declared a war on the people particularly in the eastern and middle india uh, central india and uh, there were so many cold blooded murders by the state and you are also using the word organized violence it is the state organized violence which is unleashed on the adivasis only to eliminate or to alienate the maoists from the adivasis and uh, you say that it is one sided there were many un one sided attacks by the uh, state state police crpf and the paramilitary forces uh, for example in the what happened in sarkaguda what happened in gangalore what happened in many places from 2009 onwards earlier they used the salva judum the civil the, they they wanted to split the adivasis themselves and used salva judum on these people and killed hundreds and hundreds of adivasis and when you say that many civilians were killed it was during the time of salva judum they have, they have been killed and you are of course some of them are saying that maoists are using them as foot soldiers you see for last 30 years maoists are there among the adivasis it's not for maoists they have gone there of course as uh, ram mohan has rightly put they have an ideology they wanted to have to seize of the power but seize of the power for, by the people they wanted to deliver the, the goods to the people they wanted to give the political power to the people and that's why they are there and under the kradhikari jantan sarkar they are implementing the development Mr. program Rao, because in this, you see just this in today's instance i just this, want this, to bring this, you i just want this, to bring this, your this, attention this, back this, this, to this, today's no, instance no please hear me you you have put questions i am also hearing for last 15 minutes 15, 15 minutes okay sir you Very see quickly, this is the concept i want you to respond to this also this is conflict between two development programs you see the development program the adivasis wanted to implement for themselves taking the hold over their jal jangal zameen and also their territorial power and the development program given by the state and central governments as the compradors of the multinational companies and big companies and that kind of development policies in the mining and also and sorts of industries which this it is alienating the adivasis i want to this just draw the, your the, the real, i want, to, I want to draw your attention back to today's incident varavara rao um as uh, mr ramona was also pointing out no, this was actually no no you these know, were people who were going Mao, to build the, a road no, no, and the, the security the forces to, were deployed with you, them you did you did this the notice was an of attempt, this was an whenever attempt whenever incident back at, at at an infrastructure project in in the region so development is something that is actually actively being resisted also by armed maoists mm -hmm. what what kind of development the adivasis want whether the governments know as ramohan was putting rightly that what what, what have to done the, the jal jangal zameen the adivasis right on them can Ocha, i was, can i hello? say something please yes please i was posted in hyderabad long time ago i was in the cbi since i have been trained in counter insurgency and i had operated in the north east i'm from the assam cadre i was curious about the naxal problem and i asked my batchmate who was the dig intelligence i had no idea that andhra pradesh was one of the states where caste is very very strong the land sealing laws have not been legislated they were all legislated in 1955 that everybody can own only this much land the rest yes. of it has to be acquired and distributed among the landless people it has not been done and in the forest the fifth schedule the governor is not exercising his rights he has delegated to the chief minister who is evicting the tribal from the forest and leasing it for mining all illegal and unconstitutional i told my batchmate this is your problem Every insurgency has a cost. Rectify the cost; the problem will disappear. So what is the combination now, may, now minute, that we Let need? Let me just then. finish. Please. Yes. He said, "Will you please talk to my revenue minister?" I said, "Yes." I went and met the revenue minister. 
He saw me and thought that I'm an army officer. He said, are you an army officer? Very good, you've come. I said, no, I'm a police officer. We are batchmates. Right. But I've done counterinsurgency. He says, yes, what is the answer to this problem? I said, the answer is in your hands. Why don't you implement okay, the land so, sealing law? So, you so know what he said? We'll yes. never implement the land sealing law.